This week I'm going through the creative process for designing and illustrating a postcard. The very first thing I do when approaching any kind of creative project is the creative process. And step one is research. And for research, we need to know kind of the parameters of the project in order to proceed with the research so we know what to do next. So in this case, there's one deliverable. It's a five color vector print. Uh, it's going to be four inches by six inches, like a postcard size. On one side is a basic form that they fill out, which includes just their name, their birthday, and their email. That's it. On the reverse of the card is going to be a full illustration, which I'm working on right now. So those are the basic things that we have to do for this project. Secondly, what is the call to action? What do we want people to do? When they look at this, what do they take away from it? And in this case, we want them to fill out the form on the back. So. Basically, we just need to create something compelling for people and then make the form easy enough to follow and fun enough to look at. So now that we know the rules of the project, we can begin to do some research. I usually start my research by talking to the client. In this case, it was Craig. We knew that it was gonna be something about birthdays. I had this idea about something called, just this was the first thing that popped in my head when we were talking, something about a birthday cake. So I was thinking like instead of candles, I would do some sort of illustration of beer bottles coming out of a birthday cake. Usually you could do more research. People go on Google all day long, you know, look at what other people are doing in the same kind of space. What are other bars doing for stuff like this? What are their birthday clubs doing for stuff like this? You could do all that. In this case, we happen to have an idea that we liked and we just ran with it. So we're just gonna start there. I'm gonna go ahead and start researching things that are associated with that, like pictures of cake, people blowing out candles, mouth shapes. I look a lot at mouth shapes or facial expressions of people. Like I'll use real reference material so I can capture it better in my drawings and I can, you know, kind of simplify it with Sharpie lines until I get a good balance of my style and the emotion that we want. Once you have a direction, you can move on to step two, which is ideation. Ideation is like brainstorming. It's like taking all your vomit from step one, everything you liked, everything you didn't like, putting it together, and then just start projecting it out of your body. Grab a pencil, just start writing it down on paper. It doesn't have to be beautiful. I usually start with really crappy thumbnails and they're just terrible. After I've done a bunch of thumbnails, I'll start to do it at full scale exact size, in this case, four inches by six inches, which I could fit on some grid paper. I'll do that over and over a couple times until it has a good balance. So once I have a sketch that I'm really happy with, it's proportioned right, it feels well balanced, the composition's good, I move on to the development stage. And at this point, I really start to refine the illustration. I'll usually take my sketch, go over it with tracing paper and Sharpie. Initially, I'll do one pass, and then that usually looks okay, and I'll probably do two or three after that. If I'm not happy by the third pass on the tracing paper, I usually go back to the original sketch, start fresh, and then do like three or four more passes like that.
So by now I've probably redrawn the same thing like a dozen times and I've come up with an image that I'm happy with. At this point, I take the tracing paper, I have a high resolution scanner, I put it into that thing, I pull a scan, a black and white usually, at about 600 DPI, and I take that high resolution scan, I open that in Illustrator, and then I'll live trace that. And then from there, I literally will go through and meticulously clean up every single point. There's a lot of character in those points, so I try to delete certain ones. And it may not look like that much, but if you really look at it, there's a certain quirkiness to my style, and that's just because of the points. I'll spend several hours doing that. So once it feels how I want it to feel, I can start thinking about color options. In this case, it's a five color palette, so I'll start looking at various resources I use for inspiration. You know, there's tons of resources online for getting inspired. One of my favorites is Color Lovers. Uh, I check that website like all the time. <laughs> Okay, so we finished development. So now we get to move on to the fourth and final step of the creative process, revisions. So it's at this point in the process that you take all your hours of hard work, all your research, all your color exploration, all the awesome crazy time that you put into this, and now you get to stick it up on a stage in front of the person who paid you to do it, and they get to decide whether or not they like it or they hate it. We didn't feel like resetting up in my room because we shoot lots of stuff. I have Craig McLean with me from Spats who will real time feedback. What's up? Craig, thank you for being here, man. Yeah, you got it. Anytime. You look good. Thanks. You look great. You too. So, you know why we're here. Yes, I do. We are going to review the illustration of the postcard we're designing yeah. for. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Show me what you got. I'm going to show you the same illustration in three different treatments. Yeah, cool. So, like, I really like the blue and orange in this one but I'm not entirely sure about the yellow. How do you feel about the illustration itself? Oh, the illustration's great. I love it. Great. So the illustration you would consider approved? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would actually get rid of maybe the freckles on his face, but that's about it. Why is that? It just looks weird. What do you mean? <laughs> it looks like hairs on You could be places. honest, man. <laughs> It's just real time, dude. Yeah, all right. It looks like, you know, um, someone's uh, ball sack. What does? The face? Yeah. So it looks a little phallic? Yes. Hmm. Actually, I do see that. <laughs> That's but very fair feedback. <laughs> every, every, everything looks phallic, so yeah. What are you thinking? Of these three options, next steps? Because I know uh, you're kind of on a, a deadline yeah, for this. Yeah, I mean, I would just, if you could, I would use the second one. 
the the purple based one and get rid of the dots and uh, and should be good to go. Try a no five o'clock shadow version. Yeah. Cool man. Exactly. All right. Here's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna do another round of revisions. I'm gonna mm -hmm. make your requested changes. Then I will send this to you, mm -hmm. and then you can do a test print, right? Okay. Cool. Nice, bro. Sounds good. I'll meet you back here. Yes. Two thousand years later. Okay, so I'm just waiting for Craig to get home from work with the test print. Hey, John, what's going on? Oh, Craig. How convenient. I got the test print. You don't say. Yeah. So you want to talk about it? Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, so I really like how the colors pop. This looks good too. It just looks great. Probably get it. Uh, Maybe a little thicker um, cardstock. Yeah. I definitely thin. agree. You should see if they could do the same, like, grade of paper because I think it printed really well on it. Yeah, yeah. I guess the largest revision that we made when we did this was. Yeah. Actually, pretty much the only revision we made was we removed the five o'clock shadow. Yeah. That's about because it. I believe the collective opinion was it looked quite phallic. Yeah. Which I agree with. I don't know if this is weird feedback. I'm just gonna tell you, I would never say this to a client because what? we're friends. I kind of like that it looks a little phallic still. <laughs> There's something to it, I don't know what it is. John, did you just try and see if you can sell me a penis? I did sell you, you bought it already. <laughs> what do you say, this is final? Yeah. So what's gonna change? Pretty much nothing, uh, just a thicker card stock and then you're gonna do what with these exactly? I'm gonna print like a thousand of them. Sick. So Craig's super happy. Mm -hmm. I know this seems a little biased because I know him, but I promise you guys in the real world, if you can like speak to your case, people will appreciate that and see that. Like if you can justify why you did something, like if someone's like, why'd you do it like that? And you can explain it, they'll trust you. Like if you know what you're doing. Great. What you think is awesome, other people might think sucks. So with that logic, the opposite is true. So if someone thinks your shit sucks, There's it could very well be great. Yeah, exactly. Who's to say? Art is subjective, fool. Mm -hmm. So if you guys take away anything from this process, it's that there is a process. So if you ever get creative block, or you don't know what to do, or you feel intimidated by a subject matter, and you're just not quite sure how to do it, do the creative process. There's nothing wrong with research. In fact, the best people, that's what they do. Everything great that ever happened was because someone saw or felt or responded to something else that someone did before them. I don't know what the saying, I forget what it is, but like, what is it, midgets? see shit on the backs of giants or something? No. You know, like the, you know the metaphor, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, standing Pygmies. on the, yeah, no, what? See farther no. on the shoulders, Google it real quick. No, it's like. You know what I mean. If you don't know what to do, just look what other people did before you. It'll inspire you. Just try to ask the pygmies for help. Yeah, ask the pygmies for help. Just try stuff, because if you're confident, you know what you're doing. Like, mm. I've talked a lot of people into stupid shit because I was so sure. Never stop starting. Never stop starting. Ooh. Who said that? You? I, you me. <laughs> That's like quotable, dude. I feel like I should have the last word though. Can I say that? No. Never stop starting. Never stop starting. Never stop starting. Unless it's a fire. What's up? Oh, it's bright. Thank you. Jack in the box. Have a good night. You too.